Dr. Fizz, we're ready to do it. The calculation for the precession of the perihelion, and thanks to a remarkable paper by Kornbleet in the American Journal of Physics, we can do it, get the exact result in general relativity, and you don't have to take a course in general relativity. So here we have Kepler's second law that involves the aerial velocity. So I have here the dA where I've calculated for the piece of pi my base times my altitude, r times r d theta, and times one half. One half times the base times the altitude is the formula for the triangle. But I have to be careful in general relativity because the r coordinate is distorted. So this is Kepler's second law in Newtonian physics where there's no distortion. The change in area with respect to time is a constant. So to get a handle on this for general relativity and preparation, I want to calculate this area element for the pi slice from scratch. So I do that by going to the polar coordinates where my little patch of area instead of being in dx dy like it would be in Cartesian coordinates it's a dr times an r d theta. I want to integrate from 0 to big R and when I do that I get here r squared over 2 evaluate it at the limits I get the big R squared over 2 and that's the area element of that piece of pi which I know from before but I have a way of doing it so that I can do it for general relativity where there's a distortion in the dr notice that here if you look at the dr this uh, here this whole thing is a dr prime squared and see that's the distortion that has to go in for that dr notice that the r d theta is not distorted since that's perpendicular to the radial direction so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up my dr prime as the distortion factor here times dr. Notice that this is here in the denominator, so there's a minus sign here, and I'm taking a square root, so I have minus one half. Doing a Taylor series expansion when you have one minus a small quantity or a plus a small quantity to the nth power, it's simply 1, you know, plus or minus that small quantity times n. So n is negative 1 half, so negative 1 half times this gives you the plus sign with the gm over c squared or without the 2. This is the distortion that needs to go in to the integral here, the dr prime, but the rd theta part is okay. So when I make that substitution, I'm doing this integral, and this integral is easy to do. We have two parts. The first part integrates r squared over 2, and the second one just a constant. It has the r there, and from 0 to capital R, we simply have the result with the big R. Notice by factoring out the big R squared over 2, I have the classical result from Newton plus the general relativistic result, and this is what's going to call the cause the advance of the perihelion. The aerial velocity has a distortion in the time because dA prime, dT prime, has that dT prime down there and that distortion is got from here the same way, similar way we got the dr. The dT prime is the square root of everything here except for the c squared since uh, you can think of this as c squared dt prime squared so the c squared would cancel out take the square root and then the Taylor series expansion on this simply puts the one half in there which then cancels the two so this is the distorted time element and notice here it's in the denominator so what I need here I've simply brought this down here I need to have 1 over this, so the, D, the dt prime, this is in the denominator, so I have to have this part here in the denominator. And when you have 1 over 
1 minus a small quantity, it divides into 1 to give 1 plus a small quantity. A variation of the Taylor series expansion. This is 1 minus epsilon to the minus 1 power, so it should be 1 minus the n times the epsilon, which the two minus signs cancel. I like to remember the rule that if you have 1 over 1 plus a small quantity, it's 1 minus that small quantity when you divide and vice versa. So if it's the 1 minus, you get the 1 plus, and if it's the 1 plus, you get the 1 minus. So Then we come down to applying this. We uh, go ahead and put this part here, this uh, derivative in this form here. This has to be sliding down here at work on this d theta thing. So I have the r squared over 2 from before. That's good. I have this factor. I have then the d theta dt prime and that is where this slides in here and now I have all the good variables, the, the undistorted ones, theta and t. However, I have these other factors showing up from the distortion. So here, when we multiply these out, uh, for the uh, multiplication, you have 1 times 1. That's here. r squared over 2 remains. And then you get one cross term here and the other cross term there. So there's two of those. And then one over here, same factors. Uh, then you get three of them plus you get this times this, but that's a higher order term which we're neglecting because we have a small quantity. Notice the r squared over 2 is the classical term. Let's go ahead and compare these. There's classical and here is general relativistic with this extra piece in here. Comparing the two we can see that instead of having a d theta we have a distorted angle a d theta prime given by that. And when we integrate this, now what we're going to do is integrate this from 0 to 2 pi, and you'll get 2 pi plus an advancement, and that's the advance of the perihelion of Mercury. Before we do that though, notice we have a 1 over r. This is r, the uh, formula for the polar coordinates for the ellipse, and really good news here to have 1 over r because 1 over r means that this cosine thing is upstairs. We flip this and get ready to do that integral. That's going to be nice to have that up there. And all these are constants. So I have this factor here, the angular integration from 0 to 2 pi, and I'm going to have 1 plus the 3gm over c squared, and the 1 over r is all of this stuff in here. Notice that when you integrate this, you have one, two, you know, three integrals. So I've broken them up. The first one here is just one. That's the classical term that if you integrate around, you get two pi. Then I have the three gm over c squared with all the constants here. And that one there, since there's a one, that's all there is. And then for the last one, I have the one that has the epsilon and the cosine theta and these uh, common uh, factors in here. Notice that when you integrate the cosine of theta, you get the sine, and when you evaluate it, 0, 2, pi, 0, so don't even need that thing. So I get the classical one, and this one, very easy to integrate, just gives me 2 pi, and this is the magic moment. When you put that 2 pi in as a factor, you get 6 pi. This is the extra piece for the advancement of the perihelion. See, there's your 2 pi. I'm not going to worry about that. This little delta here is this extra advance in addition to the 2 pi, and that is the exact form you get in general relativity. We got it, and in our next section, we're going to plug in the values.